What's up guys? We are back with another Marvel Legends review, another Demo Goblin Wave figure, and we're taking a look at one of the two Gamerverse figures today. We've got the Spider Armor Mark III suit, which I have no idea about. We've got this thing here in our standard Legends style box, but it's done up in that white Gamerverse motif. You've got the figure in the window, artwork on the side, and then the back of the package has a product shot, and then a lineup for our Wave and the Build-A-Figure, along with a small write-up of this suit. So, yeah, let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here it is out of the package, our Spider Armor Mark III Spider-Man figure. And this is, of course, one of the Gamerverse figures, but as far as I know, this isn't actually a suit that is game-specific. It just happens to also be in the game. This is definitely something that comes from the comics, so it's uh, an interesting way to actually get a different Spider-Man. Of course, I have Almost no knowledge of what's going on here. And it's an interesting suit. It's weird for a Spider-Man figure, though. It definitely doesn't give off a very Spider-Man-y vibe, except for, of course, the big spider on the chest. So let's take a look and see what this guy can do. He is, in many respects, very similar to the Velocity suit figure in terms of what he provides. So let's see what he can do. You've got a head that can look up pretty decently. He can look down. And then, of course, you've got rotation at the neck. You don't really have any bobble side to side. Arms go out at the shoulder. He does have shoulder pads, so they really only go out that far. They do rotate all the way around. You've got your bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, of course. Mine are kind of stiff, but they work just fine. And then you've got hinges and, of course, rotation at the wrist. I really wish he had any kind of butterfly joint, just like I said with the Velocity suit. It's a Spider-Man figure. He could use it. You've got an ab crunch. He goes forward and then he goes backwards. He doesn't go back too far because he has kind of a backpack thing, maybe a jetpack or something on his back. It sort of looks like that, but I don't know. And then you've got your waist twist. Legs go out pretty decently. They kick forward all the way, and then they kick backwards a good bit as well. You've got a thigh cut. We've got double jointed knees, of course. And then there is no boot cut on this figure, but he has actual ankle rotation down at the foot. And then you've got Rocker. Of course, he does have something to get in the way, though. There are these little lips on the shin armor down here that the ankles will hit, so they only go too far. You can kind of move them a little bit, but they don't go all the way. And then you've got hinges down here as well. So he does move pretty well, but I would have, just like with the Velocity suit figure, I really wish he had a butterfly joint. It's just one of those things that makes me think of Spider-Man when I actually use it. It's something that he should be able to do to really move those arms around a lot more dynamically. Now when it comes to the when it comes to the looks on this figure, that is absolutely where things are very much non-standard for a Spider-Man figure. He doesn't really look like Spider-Man to me. Obviously, it's there. He's got a big spider emblem on his chest, and he definitely has a Spider-Man looking helmet. But this, at the base level, doesn't really scream Spider-Man to me. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But again, I have no attachment to this figure or to this iteration of Spider-Man. It is a pretty cool looking suit, though. And kind of like with the Velocity Spider-Man, it has a decent amount of paint apps. And for the most part, they did it pretty well. There is a little bit that I kind of wish they were a little more heavy handed. Like there's a little bit of bleeding. Well, not even bleeding. just sort of see-through going on here on his chest because the chest is black and then it's painted red and I can see through some of this red and you've also got a little bit of kind of banding almost around the shoulder pads though otherwise I do think that the sculpt is pretty good it gives off a very high-tech futuristic suit of armor uh, feel and vibe you've got red paint running all down the figure you've got blue paint as well the spire emblem is pretty well done it's a high gloss black compared to the more matte finish for his arms and legs and then of course the rest of his torso the back of the figure Figure is really well painted as far as the backside spider emblem. So you've got kind of like a spine that comes down here and it's all sculpted and textured. And then you've got these smaller legs for this particular spider emblem that he's got going on here. It's maybe not so much an emblem, but definitely a spider vibe on the backside of things. And it's just a pretty cool looking design. He does have the same kind of thing that the velocity figure has going on. He's got a severe lack of hands, so you've got a fist hand on the the right side here, and it's nicely textured and sculpted. They've even got a little bit of paint on the knuckles there, and he's got a thwipping hand for his left, but that's it. This guy doesn't come with any other hands, so you're stuck in this perpetual thwipping, punching pose, which 
I don't like at all when it comes to Spider-Man because he should be able to do more than that. And then the head sculpt on this guy is, is kind of basic, but you know, that's not the fault of the figure. It's just kind of basic. It's a big, hard candy shell over this head. I do have a little bit of a paint issue on mine though, because the blue on the left eye, your right, is not exactly lined up straight. So you can see some of the red through it. Otherwise, the blue is really bright and vibrant. Contrast against the blue on the body and the the head itself really shines. It's it's very plain though. There's just a hint of a Spider-Man look, but it does look pretty good and the design overall kind of blends in well with the rest of the bodysuit. Now, as far as accessories goes, this is a very similar figure to the Velocity suit, and I keep using him as the example because, well, frankly, they have a lot of similarities in terms of what they offer. So, just like that figure, again, this guy has no extra hands, he has no extra pieces for Spider-Man himself. All we get is this little guy to go along, sort of, with the accessory that Velocity Suit comes with. So Velocity Suit Spider-Man comes with the webbing, the net webbing, whereas the Spider Armor Mark III figure comes with this web effect that you can put over the face of a bad guy or anybody really, as long as their head is small enough. So some of the bigger figures, this won't work quite as well without maybe stretching it out a little too much. And then like figures like Deadpool, more of a standard size, it fits over and it looks like they got webbed in the face. So this is something that just like with the other figure, I really like. I think this is stuff that Spider-Man figures absolutely have needed to come with for a very long time. And Hasbro is just so reluctant to give it to us, but they finally gave it to us in this particular wave. They just sort of left out all the other stuff hands that Spider-Man really needs because frankly he just doesn't have enough to be as expressive or as dynamic as he really is. So overall this is another okay Spider-Man figure in this wave and I've compared it a lot to that Velocity figure because I really think they are very very similar in execution. They have pretty unique designs as far as Spider-Man goes. They're definitely different. They definitely stand out for the most part. They both have good paint apps on them and you may or may not really care about those suits, but it's cool to get different Spider-Man versions, especially in the same wave. Where they really fall flat for me is when it comes to accessories, but only sort of, because I like what they come with, but it's Spider-Man, they should have extra hands. And this figure kind of drives home the point that Hasbro definitely did this on purpose, not giving us extra hands with Spider-Man figures, because they both have the exact same configuration, which definitely is just kind of weird and kind of annoying. Otherwise though, I do think he looks pretty cool. He could have used a butterfly joint for sure, just to help him move a little bit better, but he's definitely different and unique, and he's gonna stand out on the shelf amongst your Spider-Verse display if you have one. So that's gonna do it for this look at the Marvel Legends Spider Armor Mark III. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.